through the reading of his word, uh, through worship, uh, through song, freely in this country. So we praise the Lord that we get to do this uh, freely. Uh, let me start with a word of prayer uh, before we worship the Lord uh, through song. So let us pray. Uh, Father, we are grateful for the gift of life that you have gifted us today. Uh, Lord, thank you that your mercies are made new every morning. Undeserved as we are, Lord, we come together, uh, Lord, to worship you as the one true God, the God of all creation, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we thank you for the our freedom we get to do this in our country without persecution, extreme persecution, Lord. And may you continue to strengthen us as we continue to pilgrim here in this world. Father, may the words of our mouths and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight at this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 37, Psalm 37, Psalm 37, Psalm 37, Psalm 37, Psalm 37, Now this has been a uh, lengthy psalm, um, but it's also been an instructive psalm as well. Psalm 37 has principles, wisdoms, and instructions that we can still learn, that we can still learn in our time today. This psalm shows the ongoing contrast between the righteous and the wicked. And this psalm, as we note, was the wicked are the ones prospering in the face of the righteous. And the context of this psalm is unknown. Yet, as we have gone through this psalm, each verse we have come to know that this psalm echoes the trust in the Lord. Despite the wicked prospering in their evil ways, he advises and instructs his readers to trust in the Lord. And some of those main verses that echo this trusting in the Lord is verse 3 of Psalm 37. And it reads, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. We also have verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will act. We also have verse 7. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not yourselves over the one who prospers in His way, over the man who carries out evil devices. We also have verse 23 and it reads, the steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. All these verses are based on trusting the Lord as he directs our paths. 
We also read some other verses to trust in the Lord, but trusting in the Lord as protector. Verses 12 and 13, it reads, The wicked plot against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him, but the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that his day is coming. We also have verses 16 and 17. <coughs> Better is the little that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Again, beautiful verses around the protection that God has for his people. We also see there the two destinations of the wicked, and uh, the two destinations, one of the wicked and one of the righteous. And it's written throughout this psalm. We go back to verse 2 of Psalm 37, and it reads, For they will soon fade like the green grass, and wither like the green herb. In verse 9, For the evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. We also have verse 22, For those blessed by the Lord shall inherit the land, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. For this morning's devotion, we will read from verses 30 and 31. And here, here are another two contrasts in these verses. There's another contrast here in these two verses. Can I ask our Samoan Bible readers, please, to read Salamu Tolu Sefulu Fitu, Fai Upu Tolu Sefulu, Ile Tolu Sefulu Tasi. Followed by our English Bible readers, please. Psalm 37, verses 30 and 31. Samoan Bible readers, please. Iya. Praise the Lord. Our English Bible readers, please. Psalm 37, verses 30 and 31. Iya. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom, and his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Praise the Lord. In the ESV, the mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. In our passage this morning, David gives wisdom and instructions on how the righteous person uh, responds in the face of the wicked prospering. Now, we talk, it talks about the utterance of wisdom and the tongue that speaks justice. He also mentions that the word of God that's stored in his heart was stored in the hearts of the righteous and how from here his steps do not slip. Now, the title of this devotion is Sanctified in Speech and in Word. Sanctified in Speech and in Word. As per normal, we'll go through verses 30 and make our way down to verse 31 before ending our time with an encouragement, then worship, and then a time of prayer. So verse 30, for the mouth of the righteous. Throughout the psalm, we have seen the contrast between the two groups of people, the righteous and the wicked. Here in our verses this morning is another contrast, and it's similar to verse 21. In verse 21 of Psalm 37, it reads this, The wicked borrow, but does not pay back, but the righteous is generous and gives. Verse 21 was a righteous person marked by giving. Here in this verse this morning, the righteous person is marked by his words. Now throughout the Bible, we've been given so many verses that addresses the mouth or how we should speak. And I will res reference at least two of them. We have Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as it fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Psalm 141 verse 3. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. Now in chapters 4 verse 29 in the book of Ephesians, Paul makes a contrast between corrupting speech and encouraging speech. His intent is to explain how a Christian needs to make a conscious effort to live differently than pre-salvation days. And in Psalm 141, verse 3, this psalm, we find the psalmist being slandered by his enemies. And he's not retaliating and he's not thinking bad of them, but he's sitting there taking it kindly. But in the midst of his prayers, he prays verse 3. Should he speak out? Should he speak slanderous back to his enemies? 
But the prayer in verse 3 is to set a guard, O Lord, over his mouth. Keep watch over the doors of his lips. Back in Psalm 37 verse 30, David here echoes the same thing. There is a contrast between the utterance of the wicked person to that of a righteous person. I mean, think about it. The context. The wicked prospering in the face of the righteous. He could easily fall into complaining. Man, that's, that's so unfair. Mm-hmm. Or, man, is the way I'm following the Lord, is it, is it really worth it? You know? That shouldn't be what utters out of the mouth of the righteous. Instead, David writes there, wisdom. Wisdom utters out of the mouth of the righteous. And in his context, in the face of the wicked prospering in front of the righteous, he offers wisdom. The mouth of the righteous offers wisdom or utters wisdom and speaks justice. And his tongue speaks justice. Now, the word utter comes from the Hebrew word hagah. And it means to mutter, to meditate, to imagine, or speak. So when I read that, uh, there's a, it shows that there's a careful examination of words before the righteous speak. As opposed to saying whatever comes into your mind or heart. It's almost like a testing of thought before it flows out the gates of your mouth. And David does this very thing. This whole psalm is one of wisdom. He seeks to encourage his readers while the wicked prosper in the face of the righteous. He does not just provide wisdom, but he also speaks of justice as well. Now the word speaks comes from the Hebrew word dover, and it means to speak, command, promise, and warn. And these are all strong words. And again, David does this throughout the psalm. He commands, he promises, and he warns. He does this throughout the whole psalm, and it's through contrast that David does this. The contrast between the wicked and the righteous. And the reason why David is able to instruct, command, but at the same time ponder about what he's going to say, think about what he's going to say, is found in the next verses, verse 31. The law of his God is in his heart. The best thing, which is the word of God, in the right place, which is in his heart, produces the best results. Wise counsel, wisdom, and justice. David here shows that the wise counsel and wisdom that we are reading is all because of the law of God which is stored in his heart. Now, the word law in Hebrew is Torah, which means directions or instructions, but can also reference the first five books of the Bible. These beautiful books have been the guide in David's life, his counsel, and he has hidden or stored them in his heart. Now, the Bible is full of wonderful passages to help us, to counsel us, to instruct us. And I think of Psalm 119, verse 9, as our brother Ian is taking us through. Psalm 119, verse 9. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guiding it, guarding it according to the word. Another one that I think of is Psalm 119, verse 105. Where it reads, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A beautiful passage about direction and counsel. Psalm 119, verse 9. A beautiful passage around purity and the word of God. I mean, we have a whole book here for us to read and store in our hearts. The book of Proverbs. And we also think of the cries and the laments and assurance of hope in the Psalms. Many, many books. But I think the goal here is not just to read and store, but read, store, and obey. And this is how David conducts himself. He reads the law of God. He stores it in his heart. And the outcome of such thing is this beautiful psalm that we have or that we are reading this morning. Regarding how the righteous are to respond. Uh, so this is in regards to how a righteous person is to respond in the face of the wicked and evildoers prospering. We come down to the last part of verse 31. His steps do not slip. The wisdom, counsel, and the law of God keeps one from slipping. This could be one of the many reasons why David didn't slip into fretting or being envious of what he saw around him. Because his wisdom, his conduct was sanctified by the word of God. We can save ourselves a whole lot of trouble too if we can sanctify the word of God in our hearts. 
Let it be the basis of our decisions and everything that we do in life. Let it guide our choices. Let it guide the way we speak. It can save ourselves a whole lot of trouble. And we're not always going to get it right. But let it be a practice. Let it be a sanctification. A word of encouragement or application for us. May we, if we are provided the opportunity to counsel, <coughs> guide, and offer wisdom, may it be, number one, sanctified by the word of the Lord. And from there, we can offer biblical counsel, encouragement, the way David has done here. And number two, may we take heed to how we talk. May we utter, may we meditate, may we think about the words that we say before we give counsel, before we give wisdom. So number one, sanctify the word of the Lord in your hearts. Number two, may we take heed to how we talk. I'll hand it over to Pastor Vaivai for our time of worship before heading in to our time of prayer.